Welcome to my new Sopranos analysis video. Hello Gorgeous, Vincent Passiano, Hair Salons, Blue Thunder, and the future boss of the Bonanno family. In the season 6 episode, Blue Comet, we see the New York family gearing up to take out Tony and the New Jersey family. In one particular scene, we see a meeting in a hair salon with the New York guys. Butchie, who may or may not be the owner of the hair salon, gives the order to kill Silvio, Bobby, and Tony, which also gives way to one of my favorite exchanges on the show. Three pops, within a tight time frame, 24 hours, so there's no chance for them to hit back. Top three guys. Paul, you got the area? No, management. Tony Soprano, obviously, plus Silvio Dante, and we think Bobby Bacchieri. That Mortadelle's number three. He used to be Junior Soprano's driver. And you used to sell laser printers out the back of your Crown Vic. Now, the fact that New York mobsters are using a hair salon as a front is nothing new. In real life, a Bronx mobster in the Bonanno family owned and operated his own hair salon known as Hello Gorgeous, as well as a slew of other businesses. But the hair salon is from where he derived his nickname, Vinny Gorgeous. Vinny began plying his trade in the mob in the 1970s and 80s. He worked as a driver for Dominic Trinchera and appeared in one of the mob's most famous photographs, the Pierre Hotel wedding photo, which showed the melding of high-level Bonanno captains with the Sicilian zip wing and the Montreal wing of the Bonanno family. Pretty powerful company for the fresh-faced Bassiano. Trinchera was however killed in the three captains murder in 1981 and Bassiano began working with Anthony Colangelo, a Bronx mobster who ran, among other things, a series of gambling operations. Finney worked with other mobsters to collect betting slips, protect the outfits, and pick up and drop off money associated with the gambling ring. Bassiano first popped up on law enforcement radar when he was arrested for shooting a runner involved in a gambling operation. Him and two other mobsters attacked a man named David Nunez, who was running money for a gambling operation. Bassiano was eventually acquitted for attempted murder, but was charged with a gun the police found on him, for what she did a one-year prison sentence. Around the time he was embroiled in the attempted murder case, Bassiano's boss had been released from prison, Anthony Colangelo. Colangelo had also been involved in drugs and had been serving a sentence for heroin trafficking. During this time, Bassiano and others dutifully watched over the gambling operation and passed profits on to Colangelo's family. Colangelo had heard rumblings that his protégés had been stealing from him while he was away in prison. He was last seen at a video store he owned with his longtime girlfriend. Later, his body was discovered dumped off the highway. Although Vinny was never charged, he was long suspected of being involved. In the end, Vinny took over Colangelo's Bronx gambling ring. Additionally, while Colangelo was away in prison, Vinny had allied himself with another Bronx captain, Patty Filippo, and was now firmly working for him. He also began to prosper more, opening a video store and a blimpy sandwich shop. Once the video store failed, he opened his famous Hello Gorgeous hair salon. Maybe these were viable businesses, but most likely they were fronts for another business, drugs. In the late 1980s, a new kind of heroin had been sweeping the nation, Blue Thunder. No longer from France or Sicily, this stuff came from Southeast Asia and the Golden Triangle. Police raided several locations related to the operation. They also raided Vinnie Gorgeous' large home in suburban Scarsdale, which the agents referred to as the mansion. They found nothing incriminating, and Vinnie, of course, told them they were wasting their time. There's no cash in his house. Not since the last bust. Check the vents. In a crazy trial in which Bassiano used attorney Benjamin Braffman, Vinnie was acquitted. Through skillful lawyering, Braffman had been able to convince the jury coded wiretap conversations were about gambling, not drugs and some misconduct by the government helped Vinny to avoid what was effectively a life sentence for drug trafficking. Braffman even warned him to quit his life in the mob after such an amazing escape. Vinny, however, did not listen. He continued on in his dealings, likely still in drugs. Law enforcement were never able to prove it, but long held the suspicion that he continued making money in narcotics. He was involved in a stolen car ring with Albanian gangsters slowly encroaching on the mob's turf in the Bronx. Vinny was, however, able to strike an uneasy, if not profitable, alliance with them, chiefly Alex Rouge and his organization. Bassiano's true undoing was, however, murder. He was perhaps too quick on the trigger in his mafia career. Following Joe Messino's arrest in 2003, Bassiano was first promoted to the family's ruling panel and then to street boss. During this time, he ordered the murder of Randy Pizzolo, a contractor working for him in his construction business. The motive is somewhat unclear, but it is likely he was killed because he was a chatty guy and Bassiano was worried it would come back on him. It seemed he also annoyed Bassiano, acting as a mob flunky and hanger-on. Regardless of the reason, he was shot and killed on Monitor Street in Greenpoint. 
Also, Bassiano had murdered a man named Frank Santoro who had supposedly threatened to kidnap one of Vinnie Gorgeous's sons. The case against Bassiano in these two murders was aided by none other than Joe Messino, who had secretly become a rat and recorded Bassiano talking about the Pizzolo murder while he was awaiting trial in jail. Needless to say, Vinnie was buried with legal trouble, which ended with him being packed off to prison and even considered for the death penalty. In the end, the government decided straight life, and he was sent to ADX Florence, also known as the Alcatraz of the Rockies. Still in prison, Bassiano keeps up with his Vinnie Gorgeous moniker, working out, keeping his hair nice and his nails trimmed. While in prison, Vinny has also received letters from his former mistress and risque photos from a paralegal who worked with him during the trial, on top of visits from his longtime wife, Angela. All this being said, this scene from the Blue Comet episode is for sure a reference to Vinnie Gorgeous. It only makes sense too, as Bassiano's trials were happening during season five and season six, and details would have likely been in the papers, which I'm sure the Sopranos writers often look to for inspiration.